This is your host, Abdul Bharati, and today we have with us Travis Nielsen, Senior Principal Software Engineer at Red Hat. Travis, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to be with you today. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, Rook graduation. But before we go in there, can you tell us a bit about what is Rook and what problem it's trying to solve? Certainly. Yeah. Rook is really, in a nutshell, it's storage for Kubernetes. You know, when we started with cloud-native environments, Kubernetes, uh, a few years ago, we looked at storage and we thought, hey, how do, how do I get storage in Kubernetes? Storage is something external to Kubernetes. You connect it to your cloud provider storage, or you have some external appliance that you connect to. But we said, hey, let, with, let's take Rook, or let's make Rook bring storage to Kubernetes so it looks like any other Kubernetes application. You deploy storage in the same way. Uh, no need for some external solution to storage. Can you talk about the, the origin of Rook? By origin, I mean that where the project originated, then uh, it came to uh, CNCF, uh, and then what kind of community built around it, and then we'll talk about the graduation part. So let's talk about the origin story of Rook. Yeah, originally, uh, actually, Rook was started before we even realized Kubernetes was a big thing. Kubernetes was still young. This was over four years ago now, where we were looking at doing things in a cloud native way. We knew distributed architecture was a very important part of that. Storage was an important part of that. So we thought, well, how can we uh, do storage in a cloud native way? And we even started building our own solution based on etcd. Uh, and, but, but that was complicated very quickly. To, I mean, building a distributed platform is, is very difficult. And, and so we, we realized Kubernetes has a solution for this already. Let's take a bet on it. And, and uh, almost four years ago now, we said, okay, we're gonna create an operator and, and manage the storage for you. And it, it was started on Ceph as well. So Ceph is a big part of the story where Ceph provides storage. It's been around for years and years as a stable storage platform. And, and since Ceph, Ceph provides that stable storage layer, now we really just needed to bring the management layer to Kubernetes so we can manage the storage for you. No need to build a new data layer. It's just, let's bring something we already know works really well to the community and do it in an open source way. Kubernetes, initially it was more or less like a state less workload. Now we are talking a lot about a state full workload. So how has things changed here? Which kind of uh, led to, to, to the need for something like Rook? Yeah, Kubernetes, typically you do have, you think of stateless workloads as being something that Kubernetes deploys. But pretty quickly, as soon as you deploy your stateless workload, you realize, oh, well, it needs to connect to some storage, whether it's a database or something else. And you really don't want that to be some external solution or to deploy it any differently. So the really comes down to people need state. They have stateful workloads and Rook has basically filled that need for stateful workloads. Can you give example of what are the use cases where it is being used and how further along it's in path, you know, from evaluation versus it's solely being used in production. The funny thing is that most of the technology that we talk about, even they are yet to graduate, they're already being used in production. You know, these are not the technology that are being developed here in a nursery. They, they, they were created somewhere else, they solve a problem, and then they were put in CNCF to build their community around it. So talk about uh, the production usage of Rook. Right, so the, I mean, from the start, we really tried to build the Rook community. and. That was a, a foundation for it. Open community, open source, open governance. And and so with that philosophy, I feel like you know, community members started to pick up on it. And, you know, we were presenting at KubeCon and people started to take note. And I thought, oh, this is really useful. Storage for Kubernetes. My staple workloads have some way of deploying now. Um, very useful. And so people initially were primarily deploying it in their you know, they're on-prem solutions. They have their own data center. They need some storage solution. And there just wasn't, you know, really an open solution, open source solution before Rook, where that gave them that in, in their bare metal environments. And now it's expanded more. There are scenarios where Rook is also useful in, in cloud deployments. So even if you're running in a cloud provider that has some storage behind it, like in Google Cloud, AWS, or Azure, or others, 
um, even if you're in those environments, Rook provides a consistent storage platform and also improves some scenarios around performance for small volumes and um, the number of volumes you can mount and, and things like that. And so there are advantages, you know, a lot in bare metal environments where there's no other solution really, and, and even in cloud environments. As uh, you rightly mentioned that these technologies were used in production. So what does graduation really mean? One, uh, the project itself or the, 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 the community itself and users. Does it really matter if that project is graduated? That's a good question. The, I don't think anything would have changed ultimately in how we've created the project, the features we're adding and things. Uh, but really what graduation means to the project is that uh, the community recognizes it as something that's positive for the, the ecosystem. You know, the CNCF has built this and helped nurture this ecosystem around uh, Kubernetes and distributed architecture, cloud native solutions. And you know, we're happy that they recognized Rook as, hey, this is an important part of that, that solution to bring the storage to Kubernetes. And so it has brought more visibility, uh, more um, yeah, just more help in getting people on board. Since it's, it's an open source project, so everything is already there for people to see. Uh, but still, if we ask, you know, what does the roadmap of uh, Rook look like? Or um, what are some of the challenges that you're still trying to solve or features that you're looking at adding to the project? You know, first and foremost, we want to continue with our releases that are stable. We have lots of people in production, so keeping them running first is always is always a priority. Uh, beyond that, it's really, you know, software is always evolving. Kubernetes has new versions come out. Ceph has new versions come out. And Rook needs to adjust to those. And so I'd say that's the first priority. Keep up to date with whatever the latest platform is, you know, is providing us. But also, really, you know, every with every update, there are new features. Uh, the next release we have uh, coming up in mid-November we're planning on, uh, well, a number of features. Uh, I guess I don't need to go into all of them, but ultimately adding new uh, new features for the storage providers like Ceph. Ceph is our main stable storage provider. And also looking for contributions to get our other storage providers uh, up, up to a stable state like NFS, uh, Cassandra, and others that, that are still in the alpha state just because we're looking for more involvement from the community there to get that interest up. Travis, uh, thank you so much for taking time out from your schedule today and talk about Rook. And I look forward to talk to you again. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. It's been good, good to be with you.